Another iPhone that doesn't get my recommendation in 2018. Let's find out why. Let's go. So what is up, guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Hope you're having a beautiful day, beautiful night, beautiful evening, wherever you are watching this video. And welcome to Don't Buy iPhone 6 in 2018. Let me explain why I feel this is not a great deal. Now, if you guys didn't see and you're looking for a 5S, I don't recommend you buy that one either. These are the two phones I don't recommend in 2018. And I explained why on the 5S. And some people say, well, you're not supporting them no more. Not true. I'm still going to cover these in software updates on multiple iPhone comparisons going forward. I'm talking about from the perspective of somebody who's actually about to buy an iPhone right now as of the recording of this video. I don't think that they should go ahead and do that. However, let's talk about the reasons why. So the first one is durability. Now this is not got to do with this crack. I intentionally dropped this. Well, I didn't intentionally, but I accidentally dropped this thing and you could check out how I cracked this phone. I made a video on that as well, but this is, you know, has that design of the newer iPhone, which would deceive and trick some people into thinking that they're getting a great phone, just like the new one, when really they're getting a phone that's starting to show some issues. Now, from the beginning, Apple received flack on this phone for its durability aspect, meaning that the phone, you know, bend it a little bit, not so much on a smaller six, but the bigger one. So if you're looking at the six plus, you might want to take that into account as well. But what I found mostly to be the problem with this phone is that it flexes a little bit and the screen makes a little creak. So I can kind of feel like a gap in between the screen and the body. Now, this not might, might not affect all of the iPhones, but to me of the six series design, this was the weakest one. And the iPhone five, just like with its shipping, this had a little bit of issues with just overall durability in my opinion. So if you're looking for the most durable iPhone, I think even the 5S has a better build than the you know 6, but I'm not recommending the 5S, I'm recommending the SE over both of these phones. So my second reason after durability is this iPhone is has an impending slowdown. Now, listen, there's already, you know, a slowdown going on with the six. It's already not super quick, but this one definitely runs, I would say 20% or so better than the iPhone 5S. So this one is functional. It's just not blazing fast. So it's definitely usable in 2018 and iPhone six, but it has an impending slowdown. And what I mean is that it's on its way to slow down. 2019 is coming. Now, every five years, it looks like the iPhones are slowing down. So Last year was pretty much the end of the road for the iPhone 5, 2012 to 2017. That's five years. iPhone 5 got excruciatingly slow. I stopped doing videos on that because it was just taking forever. It was just, you know, to update and all that stuff. iPhone 5S, here it is in 2018. The phone is slowing down incredibly. So with that history in mind, going into 2019, the iPhone 6 on iOS 12, we're going to cover it later this year has an impending upcoming slowdown. And if I was buying a phone and I'm planning on keeping this thing a couple years, I'd be like, I don't know about that. I don't know if I wanna get my phone and then it's slowing down in just six months when iOS 12 comes out. My third reason is competition in this price range and this segment is stronger than ever. Now the iPhone 6, at one time had the build quality that you know right that was unrivaled by a lot of manufacturers but now at 200 bucks you got phones like the honor 7x you got a lot of cheaper phones that have bigger screens than this the same build material even better you know durability than this same same quality of screen same a uh, little bit faster processors more storage at a cheaper price point so the competition in this segment is stronger than ever i even got this phone for 99 dollars, the nokia 2 um, i'm not sure this one is better than the 6 we'll see later but it has some decent specs here so you can get a lot of good you know phones for pretty cheap these days and this one to me just has too much competition at its price point even on the prepaid market that you know make this to me not worth it here in 2018. My next one is the camera at eight megapixels this camera does better than a lot of cheaper you know phones will do but this phone is actually more than an iPhone SE and it has a worse camera. This has an eight megapixel camera. The SE will give you a 12 megapixel camera, no 4K recording. The SE will give you 4K recording all at a cheaper price on the prepay market and you know, and a lot of used refurbished models cheaper than this. So that camera is not cutting it, especially considering that it's competing with one of its own com uh, phones from the same company, the SE. The next reason is performance is starting to show its age. Now I said earlier that it is functional, 
But overall, you know, I'm not saying on the home screen, it looks fine here. But when it comes to, you see that little lag right there. When it comes to day-to-day -day performance, when you pull this out of your pocket, you're using it from time to time, it just shows more jitters and lag than ever before with iOS 11. And this is, you know, pretty much a universal problem with a lot of iPhones. However, the 6 is one of the slower ones of the bunch. Now, like I said in the 5S, it's not as slow as this phone, but it's not that much faster. A lot of people know that the 5S and the 6 were pretty much identical in performance. So this one's starting to show quite a bit of slowdown in comparison. I had somebody comment the other day. They said, my 6 Plus is so freaking laggy. So, you know, people are attesting to this themselves. So let's get on to the next one, and that is the price is just too darn high for this phone. Now, I like to look at Amazon because Amazon is a very well-known shopping website. Take a look at these prices for a 16 gigabyte refurbished 6. 255 bucks. I'm sure you're already thinking, get the hell out of town by sundown. 310 for an iPhone 6. 254. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous for this phone. You can't even sell yourself on the street an iPhone 6 for this price. So not a good deal when it comes to what you're going to pay likely for this price. And, you know, iPhones tend to hold their value and people like to sell this phone at a higher price point when they get older because that logo it has a very strong brand recognition. Apple is a, they got, you know, they got that brand recognition. So you can sell their older phones at higher prices. And my last one is value when it comes to selling this phone. Now, I just talked about that a little bit, but if you buy this phone now and you plan on keeping it for a year or two, you're basically going to get nothing back if you go to sell this phone. So to me, this is not a good value purchase even in trying to resell this phone. Now, if you could rip somebody off, you probably would get away with that. But I mean, then you're going to not feel good about that. I mean, who? why would you want to rip someone off? You know, I wouldn't feel good. It's going to come back around to, you. you know, karma is coming back. So this one right here, not a good value to sell or to purchase right now. And lastly, people are going to say, well, it can be a great B phone, a backup phone. It still works. What about for people who don't need all those features? I just want to use WhatsApp. I just want to use an app or two. Of course, any phone's going to work for that. I'm talking about people that are going to buy this phone right now as their primary driver and say, hey, you know, this is my new phone. I'm going to use this for a long time. And don't take my video as this phone won't work. You won't be able to actually take a picture, use applications. It's not that bad. I mean, it'll work. I'm just saying, if you do your research a little bit, look around, there are much better options than this. And I just feel it would be dishonest for me to tell you, you should buy this phone in 2018 when truly in my heart, I feel like you shouldn't. And if that makes you mad, well, then so be it. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, informing, entertaining, do me a favor, click that like button for me. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more, more OnePlus 5T content coming. I'm also going to be doing the Should You Buy series continuing on the 7 and the 7 Plus coming around the corner. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here up and you master your technology. Have a great day, great evening, and peace.